What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker Studio. This is a beginner-friendly intro into Mongoose, which is a really nice JavaScript library that makes it easy to work with Mongo. The only two things you need to do this, uh, to follow along with this episode, are going to be some know-how of how to use the terminal, and I guess it's actually three things. You're gonna need to have Mongo installed, which will be beyond the scope of this, because what you do on your computer, if you're on Windows, will be different than what I did on my Mac, for example. Um, so go look on their website about how to install Mongo. It should be pretty straightforward. On Mac, you just install with Homebrew. And um, you're going to need to essentially have an NPM repository set up. So we're working inside of this um, Node API uh, demo that we're working through. So And this is relevant to that series. So you don't need to be watching that to follow along here. Um, but if you want to, I'll link down in the description. The only other thing you have to do is make sure that Mongo is started. So if you installed with Homebrew, there will be some command like brew services, start Mongo, so on and so forth. Anyway, the documentation should spell that out pretty clearly. And then the next thing we're going to do is install Mongoose into our uh, NPM package. So we're going to say NPM install Mongoose. And this will basically set up this library for us. Once that is installed, we're just gonna go ahead and run a new node session. So we're gonna say node experimental repl await. And once we're in here, we're just gonna go ahead and require mongoose. So we'll say const mongoose equals require uh, mongoose. And this will give us this mongoose instance. So before we can actually do anything, we have to actually connect to some database. So the reason we're using experimental REPL await is so that we can actually use await in here. So we're gonna say await, and we'll say uh, mongoose.connect. And if you've started up MongoDB on your local host, you should have mongodb slash slash local host I think it's 27017. Um, so something like that should be running for you. And then what we need to do is specify a database name. Now this can be, I think, pretty much anything that you want. So what we're doing in this REST API example is we are just have the simple JSON API with a list of dogs. Um, something just super basic for the example. So we'll just say dog API and um, we'll run this and now we should be connected to the database okay cool so the first thing we need to do if we want to actually like store something in the database is define a schema this is always what you have to do in mongoose so we'll say const dog schema and we're going to say new mongoose.schema capital s and in here, we need to define the attributes that we want to have and tell it what type it's going to be. So we're going to say name, string. It's going to have a breed, which is also going to be a string. And it's going to have, let's say, an age, which is going to be a number. And then we'll just close that off. And now we have our schema. So now that we have defined a schema, what we've essentially done is defined a mapping from our code onto the database. And now we're gonna define an object that's gonna sit on top of the schema. So this may be a little confusing if you've never done it before. Once you've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. So we'll say const dog equals, and we'll say mongoose.model And we're going to say dog is the name of the model, and then it's going to operate based on the dog schema. Okay, so now if we look at dog, we get this model with an object and then dog printed out in the middle. So far, nothing revolutionary. Uh, we're just kind of getting set up so that we can actually create data. Now, you can see here that we have schema as a capital S, model is a lowercase s. That's just what the documentation says, so that's what we do. So now that we have our schema and our model defined, what we can do is actually start defining dogs. So we could say const sam equals new dog. And this is going to take essentially the list of arguments that we define. So we could say name is sam. 
uh, breed, say like lab, and age is 10. Okay, now we can look at Sam here, and it's gonna print out this object, and it's got an ID and so on, and if we wanna save this in the database, we need to say sam.save, and I think we should await this. Okay, cool, so how do we know that this is actually saved in the database? Well, what we can actually do is look it back up by saying um, await, dog.find. Now find basically just pulls back all the dogs from the database. So we get this array and you can see that we have um, Sam is our first item in here. So let's save a couple of others. Let's say like um, const Lilo equals um, new dog and we'll say name is Lilo breed, we'll say husky, and age is three. And now if we do await dog.find, we get the first one, and that's because we have not saved yet. I just almost confused myself. If we do await lilo.save, and now we do dog.find, we get both. So that's actually a good example that just sort of accidentally showed you that it's not actually saved in the database and won't show up in queries until you actually save it. Okay, so how do we look individual ones back up once we have saved them? So what we can do is say await uh, dog.find by ID and pass in either one of these IDs that we have here. So that's gonna give us Lilo, and if we wanna get Sam, we will just back this out and copy this. And this is useful for, like this is probably the most common way to look up objects inside of like a REST API when you just pass in the ID. And we can also do um, find and pass in all sorts of things here. So we could just pass in like the name is Sam and this would give us back, you can see the difference, and let me point this out, if you don't notice, here on this line, it's just returning an object. So when we do find by ID, it's giving us a single item. When we do dog find name, we're getting back an array. So this is gonna give us back everything where the name is Sam. You can do the same thing for, and name Sam might not be the most useful, but we could do breed, you know, lab, and that's gonna give us back all of the labs, which may be a more interesting query um, if we're filtering the API or something like that. So that's pretty much it. Now you know the fundamentals for how to work with Mongoose and Mongo. Um, so we're gonna drop this here. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, ask any questions down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our new tutorials. And I'll talk to you later.